Today's guest is such a cool guy. His name is Dr. Michael Sinell, or he just goes by Dr. Mike. Uh, I met Dr. Mike at a recent biohacking Congress event out in Miami. And I was like, who are you? <laughs> All right. As we started talking, I'm like, can you tell me a little bit more about your background? So here you go, guys, here's the scoop. So he's a physician, healer, author, UCLA, clinical professor, serial entrepreneur, angel investor, biohacker, and lifelong spiritual seeker. Okay. You got all that. So listen to this after completing his residency at Cornell university medical center, he, um, in New York, in New York city, he relocated to Los Angeles to help run the department of outpatient physical medicine at Cedar Sinai medical center. He subsequently became a partner at a prestigious Beverly Hills spine practice and founding partner of a national ambulatory surgery center company and LA based hospital. So while serving over 20 years as assistant clinical professor at UCLA School of Medicine, he authored several scientific articles and two well-known books on back pain, including back pain remedies for dummies. Um, while teaching workshops on the mind-body connection at well-known institutions, including SLN Institute, he consulted for and founded several small healthcare companies and served on multiple scientific and business advisory boards in the healthcare sector. So um, as a strategic angel investor, he, he presently advises multiple founders in health and wellness, neuromodulation, pharma, biotech, and psychedelics research while serving on a nonprofit board and owning mental health centers. So his new biggest thing is what we're going to be talking about today, and that is medical foods, which is natural. It's a natural medicine company, um, and it's medicalfoods.com. So we're going to get into what that is because he was just lit up like a firework talking about this medical foods thing. And I was like, wow, this is really, really interesting. Um, and I wanted to fill you guys in. So if you want to check it out yourself, I mean, you'll hear in the episode, but again, the website is medicalfoods.com um, and they're talking about uh, messenger amino acid technology. Really cool. It's basically a way and I'm going to sum it up. I mean, I, I don't know if he would say it this way, but probably it's like, how can we get people off so many pharmaceuticals? Yeah. And he found a really, really, really cool kind of loophole, I guess you might say with the FDA. <laughs> so just an awesome, awesome human being. I'm really excited to introduce you guys to him. So here is Dr. Mike. All right, Mike, let's talk about medical foods. But before we do, I was wondering if you could tell the audience about your background and what brings you here. Cause I think it's important to know that because I think it gives credit to the fact that you're so interested in this. So can you give us a little background on your experience sure, yeah, in the health yeah, industry? Yes, I, I will. Cause that's the passion that brought me here. So, you know, I trained traditionally somewhat as a medical doctor, um, did my residency in New York at Cornell, specialized in physical medicine and rehab, and subsequently went out to Cedar sinai in Los Angeles, ran a department of outpatient physical medicine, became a UCLA assistant professor, and spent 30 years on that track. And my orientation, despite um, very traditional Western training and academics and authoring a couple of books on back pain, because I spent a lot of my life in the world of spine and pain management. Um, I was always very interested in mind-body medicine. My undergraduate major was psychology. And during my residency, spelt a, spent a lot of time with uh, John Sarno as a mentor who sort of connected stress and um, stress and the mind-body connection to pain, in particular back pain. And that's re very relevant on my journey because he became a mentor and I became sort of his first almost disciple in helping bring mind-body connection to the world of spinal disorders mm. in back pain, like stress as a big cause. And you know, again, so I was always integrating what I can holistically and learning in my own life and from my patients into my treatment for patients. And that included becoming, when I moved to Los Angeles, getting deeply into yoga practice, learning about energy in my body, getting deeply into meditation. I went on to teach both of those in the med school. Um, so I was practicing in Los Angeles in a spine institute had integrative clinics with a number of practitioners, and then ultimately got acquainted with medical foods, which at their essence, it's like food is medicine and exercise is medicine. Many things we know is medicine and good attitude is medicine, but the food is medicine was very interesting to me as that we could provide 
a medical food in an encapsulated form, as opposed to prescription medicines, and regulate neurotransmitters, balance the body to heal naturally. And I came across these in my clinical practice and had incredible patient results with a safe option. And, uh, you know, it wasn't pharmaceuticals with lots of side effects, and it wasn't supplements. So um, I could go on to the FDA definition, but I'll pause for a moment and see if uh, that gives a little sense of uh, what you're looking for. Yeah, thank you so much. And <laughs> you're just like, and here's 30 plus years in a quick sentence, you know. Um, so thank you. <laughs> It's like, let, let's take that part. in what you just said there. Okay. That was a lot of background and while, well, cause we're going to obviously talk about these medical foods. I think this is super fascinating and that's why you're here on the show and, and there's things, you know, involved with back and joint discomfort in there. But while we have you for a second, since we have your expertise, can you elaborate just a little bit on anyone who is experiencing back pain on just some direction that they might, you know, besides what we're going to talk about here in terms of understanding how emotions and stress are connected to back pain? Sure. Sure. Yes. I mean, my, among my favorite subjects in the world. I Yay. mean, I, I reflect on what I did seeing thousands of patients with back pain in my practice in Los Angeles. I was part of the biggest spine center in Los Angeles as a partner and the UCLA Spine Center. And my role, unlike many of my partners who were top spine surgeons, was to connect with people, often just reassure them, let them understand that stress and emotions can be expressing through back pain, even though they might have sprained their back, bending over and lifting something, that the body has a natural healing ability that is the miracle of miracles. And a lot of times it's just us getting out of the way and balancing the body and allowing the right conditions in our mind-body interaction in our, you know, at a, at a mind-body-spirit level to free us from it and that the pain often may transmute from something that may have a biomechanical aspects to it in a sprain or a muscle spasm and often go on to chronic pain and inflammation. And that has many variables, especially stress that could play into accelerating it, perpetuating it, and ultimately causing it over time, especially in a chronic condition. So John Sano, my mentor, wrote a pioneering book, Healing Back Pain. Healing Back Pain? Yeah, yeah. He passed a few years ago. S A R N O. It's probably sold millions of copies. And the amount of people that just reading it, getting the information, which is what I used to do with many people and give lectures and say, wow. just think psychological, not physical. Wow. Maybe you're, maybe you're angry at your parents for some past trauma, and now this is showing up when you sprained your back as something to distract you from underlying emotions and express physiological. Wow. through a whole physiologic mechanism and dysregulating your autonomic nervous system. I mean, it's a, again, it's 30 years in a few minutes. Yeah. I'll try yeah. to do it with you, <laughs> but I'm glad to dive in deeper. I hope I didn't confuse it too much. Oh, um, no. I, the I mean, first, yeah, go ahead. the first thing I do, if chronic back pain, I would, I would consider, I would, I would, I would know the important information that if, if you didn't have big trauma and you're not waking up in the middle of the night with severe pain and having radiating numbness or tingling and weakness, that whatever's going on in your back is probably not very dangerous. In some societies, you wouldn't see a doctor for it. And the suggestion first off would be, hey, knowing, all right, this isn't dangerous. And considering that emotions and stress may be playing a role, and thinking psychologically. Mm. And yes, in the acute pain, doing things like maybe 24 hours of resting and not lifting and icing and being in proper ergonomic settings, but mostly doing relaxation, then gently stretching and slowly getting back to physical activity without fear of the pain. Mm. And usually it's going to go away in 90 plus percent of cases. And when it doesn't, it may not be because of the x-ray or the herniated disc on the MRI or the trauma you had. It might be for many other things. And be very careful when seeing a doctor. Because in my first book, I wrote the message on one of the like subtitles was, 
in this country, one of the most dangerous things you can do with back pain is see a doctor, like get in the medical profession. So that's mm-hmm. a whole other topic. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've got another guest coming on soon. And he wrote a book about this too, is about like that kind of the, the sham <laughs> of the bet. He's an orthopedic back surgeon as well. And he, he yes. you know, but he's like, it's, a, it's a, money monopoly yeah. it's not necessarily it is, serving it people is. in the way that it should <laughs> or could exactly i i, I we, we you have to connect us because uh okay those are, okay those yeah. are my partners my whole life and uh we could co-author many things together but uh and and by the way it's not actually only it's it's often just the system and the doctors right. many of the doctors well-intentioned healers right. with the mentality that after your training if you're a hammer everything's a nail and just not being yeah. trained to consider some of the uh, different aspects of what pain is, which is also a disease of the nervous system controlled by neurotransmitters, which brings us to medical foods. But uh, yeah. we could we could go everywhere. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. And and we'll link his books in the show notes. And also Dr. Sarna. Am I saying that right? Sarno. S A R N O. Sarno. Sarno. John okay. Sarno. John Sarno. Okay. John I will Sarno. we'll link that up as well. So thank you for that. Little. I just, I just like I couldn't not ask right, right. <laughs> while you're here. And and also I'm glad you shared that because I mean, 30 years ago that was incredibly pioneering in medical (laughs) back pain to be like, well, we're going to talk about emotions and how emotions and trauma are playing. I mean, that's very pioneering. (laughs) And, and now you're doing it again with this, you know, I had never heard of medical foods until I met you just this past week at, um, the biohacking event. And so, you know, first of all, let's get really basic. What does this mean? What do you mean? You know, people are like medical foods, like strawberries. That's important. (laughs) Yeah. So what is it? Good and important question because, Everyone knows what supplements are. Most people know supplements, you know, vitamins, minerals, amino acids, herbs, right? Different types of plants. And everyone knows what uh, pharmaceuticals are, which are typically new chemical entities that go through an FDA process of approval and then can make a claim that they treat a disease. And they're important, but often with many, many side effects, as we see on every commercial right now, right? you know, yeah, may cause death. By, <laughs> right. They, they cause a lot of things. But, you know, if you really need an antibiotic for a real bad infection, you're going to take it or you may die or a variety right. of other things. Right. However, you know, my whole thing, if there's a safe alternative that could get you to the same place, you certainly want to consider it. There's no answer is a pure answer, no pharmaceutical, typically, no anything, no surgery. You know, usually we're more complex as a human organism is. So getting back to med food definition, it's, it's actually an FDA category. So the FDA approves pharmaceuticals. They could either be prescription or then move to over the counter, as you all know, right? Or, right, you either have it in front of the counter where you, need a pres- where you don't need a prescription behind the counter. And when it becomes generic, it'll eventually move over the counter, like Prilosec or many drugs, you know, ibuprofen. Right. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. a great example because it'll tie us into the med foods. And then supplements, as you know, are not regulated by the FDA. So they're not able to make drug claims to treat a disease. You know, there's a lot of good supplements out there. There's a lot of very good supplement companies out there. The majority of supplements are based on scientific theoretical mechanisms, not necessarily human clinical trials like a drug has to go through to become a pharmaceutical, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there's a typical big distinction. There are supplement companies that do some human studies. To be a pharmaceutical, you're doing human clinical trials for safety and then efficacy to show how good it works. To be a supplement, you're creating a brand. You could make mm-hmm. it in your basement because manufacturing mm-hmm. is not even regulated in the industry. And then you go out and sell it, right? And that's what's really tricky because it's real hard for a consumer a consumer to discern of the hundreds of supplements right. or thousands now, number one, how it works, what's real, what's really even in it, because yep. they could say things in the labels and there's been many, many studies that show what it says on the label is not accurately accurate. Yeah. And then what it's supposed to do or the category it's supposed to be in that although the theoretical science sounds, sounds nice, it doesn't really carry over to humans. Mm-hmm. And there's many placebo flex and everything. 
but the world of supplements is wonderfully complicated for the consumer because it's yeah. growing by leaps and bounds because consumers are hungry for more natural options mm -hmm. and rightfully so are scared somewhat of pharmaceuticals, which they should be aware always of side mm -hmm. effects and drug interactions. But then they're stuck with the supplement world, which is somewhat of a marketing game in between the good quality supplements that they may need and that can, that can help them, which also has to be very individualized depending on in an advanced model and where we'll move in the future, their genetics and their micronutrient uh, balance at a particular time in their life. So we'll move to precision medicine, which some supplement companies are trying to do. Send us a blood test, let us analyze your micronutrient status. A great functional medicine doctor will do this. He'll look at your genetics, identify SNPs, look at your lots of lab tests that are not conventional in medicine, and may come back and say, you know, if we straighten out your methylfolate, all these psychological symptoms are going to go away. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. wow. And then just buy it from the right company, right? Right. Which it's actually has the right bioavailability and puts what they claim in. So that brings us to medical foods, right? We have supplements and pharma. And in between are medical foods, which are very exciting, which, by the way, I didn't know about the category. That was quite embarrassing for me after having practiced 18 years and ran across them. I don't think 99% of doctors I know know about medical foods. It's an emerging, rapidly emerging category that's going to make a, a big impact in the future of medicine. And many companies like Nestle's Health Science, I think, invested $700 million into research. And some of the big farmers are investing because they're natural ingredients. Mm -hmm. It's an FDA category called grass, generally recognized as safe. That's the first criteria, the ingredients. They, have, they can be vitamins, minerals, amino acids, like the ones I'm gonna to describe today. Um, so it's grass ingredients. It's uh, CGMP, which is Certified Good Manufacturing Practice. So just like pharmaceutical, the FDA does regulate the manufacturing. It regulates that the ingredients are all generally recognized as safe. Because the ingredients are safe and you have good manufacturing, and then you have very strong science, which I'll go into in a minute, you are able to make a drug claim without going through a five plus year approval process of human trials because you have to do human trials on new chemical entities because we have to see if they're safe in a human. But we know vitamins and minerals and amino acids are out there naturally. We're consuming them in food sources. So we know they're safe, mm -hmm. they're in the grass category. So the FDA doesn't require medical foods to go through human clinical trials to make claims, but it does have its criteria, which is CGMP manufacturing, grass ingredients, requires physician supervision. And it says that, at least you put it on the label, the FDA seems a bit unclear about how that's defined. You're supposed to have a physician because you have a disease that you're making a claim that you're treating. So I'll talk to you about sleep disorders as one of the amino acids I utilize or chronic pain and inflammation, if you have that, and you're taking something to treat it even though it's nutritional management or dietary management, for a medical food, the label says have physician supervision. The fourth category, which is the most intense and important is that you're proving scientifically that you meet a nutrient deficiency in a particular disease that cannot be met through a regular diet. So it's interesting to think mm -hmm. that diseases have nutrient deficiencies at the cellular level. And I, I, I like to use a nice metaphor my brilliant friend Jeff Becker gave me, um, Dr. Becker, who said, like, think of a car going on a highway at 60 miles an hour using gas. It's pretty efficient, right? If it starts going up a giant hill, it's consuming more because of the increased energy demand, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the metabolic demand of our cells mm -hmm. under in a disease state. If we're of chronic right. sleep deficiency, chronic inflammation, we have an increased metabolic demand at a cellular right. level. So we subsequently, it turns out, have increased nutrient needs, right? Yeah. And the neurotransmitters in particular are deficient relatively from where they need to be to meet those increased metabolic needs. So you have a relative deficiency of a neurotransmitter in a disease state mm -hmm. that if you replenish, which we do with these 
amino acid-based medical foods and balance the neurotransmitters, we've met the deficient deficiency nutritionally with a nutritional approach and balance the cellular environment so that the body can heal naturally. Because again, as we know, if you optimize the body, stress, nutrition, physically, it should go into a healing state. So mm -hmm. that's how the medical foods work. That may have been a way too long mm. a diatribe, but uh, no, I, 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 you I love all of that. Thank you. And I, you know, on your last point, I think this is so important. Um, neurotransmitters is a big fascination of mine. I, I love studying neurotransmitters and I, I, you know, I do DNA testing and lab testing and all right. those things with my clients. So I'm, I'm nerdy like that. And what I've learned is this is how, how I see it. Like one, we, even if you're not in a disease state, we're living in a world that is progressing so quickly. It's, it's, it's stressful. It's hard to keep up yeah. with like our technology and everything. So we, I'd say everybody, that's why everybody's on caffeine and Adderall and like, what else, you know, it's just like a, trying yeah. to keep up. And then, so there's all this stress. And then on top of it, we're eating all these packaged, convenient, crappy foods. So just not getting the amino acids that we would be if we were forced to only eat meat and plants and that's it. And then on top of it, our gut microbiomes from all the, you know, the glyphosate and just all the stress. And, you know, it's, so I'm a huge fan of supplementing, especially amino acids. I take a, an amino acid blend Boss. every single day, like a higher dose of tyrosine, phenyl mm -hmm. things to build dopamine, right. a little bit of serotonin, you know, cause it just, it impacts my mood. So I am a big fan of what you're right. talking about. I mean, amino acids are the foundation for everything and sure. <laughs> that's our, right. what our body is made out of. So let's just, so we are, a lot of people will be listening to this on audio, but guys, if you are listening on audio, I am going to share a screen. So if you want to come watch this on YouTube, you can, but we'll make sure to just, you know, uh, be kind to our audio listeners. They're not feel like they're missing something, but basically what I'm sharing here is like what the products look like that he's talking about, because, you know, it's like, what do you mean? Uh, what, what is it? So it looks like a supplement bottle, right? And it has all these different, you yes. have Theramine, Sintra, GABA, you know, Percuric. so can you talk about, um, why you sure. created, which products you did and, you know, just the things people might want to know in terms of like why that might be yes. beneficial to them. Yeah, I'll get into that for sure. So, and you mentioned, yes, they're encapsulated. So mm -hmm. whether you're dealing with a Tylenol in a capsule or a supplement, these two are in a capsule, right? So mm -hmm. that is important because people think medical foods, it's a weird title. Yeah, is it like, drink, is it a lunch? Drink, <laughs> is it a bar? Is it a yeah. Drink, is it a powder? Exactly. Yeah. So these are encapsulated products. And if, if it's okay, I just want to tell my story of what oh, brought me to please. these because I think it'll, it'll be a relevant feed in because. Yeah, because number one, and most importantly, like I didn't invent them, and I give great credit to the inventor of this particular group of medical foods, because what happened is I was practicing medicine in town, had a number of clinics with integrated clinics, uh, chiropractors, acupuncture, psychology. I always believed in an integrated, integrated approach, right? Mm -hmm. Um and I came across these bottles in a friend's office who I was meeting for lunch. Mm. She was a very prominent doc. And I was like, what's that? He goes, how do you not know about theramine? It's for pain and inflammation. Aren't you a pain specialist? I'm like, oh my God, I'm a UCLA professor on the podium <laughs> here. And I don't know something. <laughs> and he's a smart colleague of mine. You know, so <laughs> to make a long story short, he says to me, well, they have double blind published studies against ibuprofen and naproxen, which are like the biggest anti-inflammatories in the world, right? Right. Even Advil. And I'm like, Motrin, what are you talking about? And I know, despite that many, many, many of my patients are on these non steroidal anti-inflammatories, many of them have big problems with them, with gastrointestinal side effects, most remarkably, yes. some with bleeding, some with like... Right clotting issues, some with cardiac toxicity, like mm -hmm. it's endless. And these are some of the most popular drugs on earth. And I'm like, mm -hmm. there's an option that has published double blinded studies against these. How could I not know? So it was sort of embarrassing, but I looked into it, <laughs> was fascinated. And he was someone I really respected and said he was having very good results. So hence, I learned about the medical foods category. Wait, they're all natural. They have GMP manufacturing. They have big science these physician supervision. And at that time they were prescription only. So he was prescribing them to all these patients in a busy, mm. busy clinic. Many of the products we'll refer to in the picture. 
And I respected him and I said, wow, I read the science. I'm like, I have to try these. So I started trying them in my patient population. And you know, this is Los Angeles. Everyone was like a natural option. Great. I want one for sleep. I want one for, yeah. you know, appetite suppressant, osteoarthritis. Just they're all, I don't have much to work with. I have many of them on drugs that I don't like. I'm doing all sorts of other approaches, but Drugs is common. They're common, you know, prescription pharmaceuticals. So as much as I would orient towards weaning people off, it was always a risk benefit analysis, right? Some people I had on opioids, unfortunately, because they were non-functional. Mm -hmm. So I start trying these. I'm getting great results. I get very passionate about them. I'm in these integrative clinics. I end up going to the founder of the company and saying, I want to get on the podium and spread the word. Because mm -hmm. if I never heard of them and I'm educating doctors regularly in orthopedics, primary care, physical medicine, rehab, a lot of doctors never heard of them or the category. Mm -hmm. So to make a long story short, I get on the podium. I end up getting hundreds of doctors who onboard thousands of patients successfully. I'm not saying they were a panacea cure-all. They were prescription only. And they worked in a lot of patients, but what they were and why I was so passionate about them is they were a safe option that needed to be considered as a first line for many of these patients. Mm -hmm. It didn't work great. You have the pharmaceutical, keep them on their sleep med. But if you could get their sleep med down 80% or get them off it or down 50%, or have an alternative with no side effects and no drug interactions, then that's natural. How could you not do it? For Same sure. with the non-steroidals and the pain meds and all these other categories. So I'm like, what? You know? So one of the problems was they took a prescription. They were being reimbursed at $400 a bottle by insurance companies, but not consistently. So some patients or a lot of patients wouldn't have coverage, which was really mm. frustrating. And I would go to the founder of the company and go, why do you have the price so high? He was essentially playing the pharma game. He was right. a brilliant scientist, inventor. He came up with this messenger amino technology that he patented and how to create neurotransmitters from microgram doses of amino acids wow. and, and develop all this stuff and all these um, medical foods, which were working. But his determination, maybe rightfully so, was to get him approved by Medicare. Mm -hmm. which they needed to be yeah. but that's going up against a very big system as you can imagine yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> and big and big pharma to some degree because you're gonna right. you know make a big dent ultimately right right so to make a long story short the fda when i was in the midst of this educating doctors distributing these came in and said no longer prescription only the insurance stopped paying for them the company was unable to pivot from an insurance only prescription model. Mm. Um, and again, to make a long story short, my goal became to acquire the company, bring them down to $60 or so a bottle mm. and just get them right out to every practitioner, every human who needs them, who may helpfully be helped by this critical natural option. Mm. Long story. Hence, that's, that's my passion to bring these out. Yeah, that's so awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And it's it's cool. Like, I love how the universe works. It was like, it was about to like, just fall through the cracks and you just like caught it. You were yes. like, nope, and we're going to make it cheaper and more accessible. And you're lit up. Exactly. You know, when we met, I was like, I, I think the first question I asked you was like, why are you so excited? You were like, you were just on fire talking about how exciting this is. You know, we're, we're talking to Reed yeah. Davis from functional diagnostic nutrition and you're just, right. the passion was just like, just emanating out of you. And, you know, I guess I'll ask you that now for the audience, like what drives you so much? Why are you so excited about this? So, yeah, you, you know, it's a perfect segue with Reed Davis and functional mm -hmm. nutritional coaching, right? Uh -huh. So, you know, as a doctor, like, Western medicine has a lot of brilliance to it, right? But yet there's a lot of embarrassing ignorance, <laughs> embarrassing. Like, yeah. I mean, I don't treat myself the way I was taught at all. Yeah. There's aspects of it that make sense. And if I had big trauma, I want to be in an ER with the greatest technology and right. technical surgeons. But, you know, to not think of root cause, like I've watched the advent of functional medicine as an example, to not consider you, to get an hour of med school nutrition, or four hours maybe now, I heard. Yeah. It, I mean, it's beyond ludicrous and scary, right? Right. But the educational system hasn't changed in 35, 40 years. Like, what else hasn't changed? Mm -hmm. I don't think there was an iPhone. 
Like, mm-hmm. I mean, and that's right. medicine today. Um, with yeah. all the brilliance there and all the potential, there's giant, giant gaps. So mm-hmm. when I see fields emerge, like functional medicine and then health coaches that are going to be part of a collaborative model of the future, a value-based mm-hmm. care, they're going to come together with doctors, with therapists, with acupuncturists, with, like everyone with a team considering the whole human considering nutrition, considering new ge- uh, genetics, considering lifestyle and mind-body connection. So when I see the people doing it, A, I get excited to talk to them because we're like-minded, that's mm-hmm. super critical. And B, mm-hmm. wherever I can help, I want to help move the needle yeah. to the next paradigm of healthcare. And yeah. medical foods is lit. It's one, it's one thing that I see that's critical. Doesn't mean don't exercise, don't eat right, don't manage the stress. They're all work hand in hand. But I have something I'm passionate to bring. So meeting a Reed Davis who has a school with thousands of people being educated who want to learn the cutting edge of functional medicine, root cause, and how to naturally heal. When he says, tell me, and I say, let's get this in your curriculum, Mm because I talk to IIN, you know, integrative nutrition, the biggest, and they were all excited. I'm mm-hmm. like, you educated 50,000, make this part of your curriculum. And for business reasons, because now they're owned by PE, they may not bring it in. Like, mm. I'm like, what? I mean, I just wrote the CEO uh, an email <laughs> and I'm curious about the response because, yes, <laughs> I want to bring it in. There's a win win business for all, but most importantly, educate your health coaches out there yeah. who are in the nutritional space who need to know about a nutritional, a targeted nutritional approach to disease with medical proof, medical proof and safety and yeah. efficacy, scientifically proven, that should be offered to every patient out there with pain and inflammation problems, sleep problems, neuropathy problems you know, um, yeah. obesity problems. I'm not saying they're going to work for everyone, but right. like everything I, else. You know, and this is like one case in life in which I, I think regulation is really helpful because, you know, I've been on the inside of the supplement industry, the health supplement industry. And there are, you know, there's people like Quicksilver Scientific and, you know, just some other brands that are super dedicated to quality mm-hmm. and, you know, they do their, and then there's ones where you thought they were, and then you find out that they're not, you know, and it was right. like, you know, even like, like all the mushroom products that are out there, you know, yeah. we had another guest on the show that, you know, he's Jeff Chilton. He's been, he was a, uh-huh. a, a mycology professor in the 60s, 70s right. and one, you know, co-authored the mushroom cultivator with Paul Stamets, you know, and he's educated. He's like, most of those mushroom products don't actually have any of the fruiting mushroom bodies in it. It's just the mycelium mixed up with a bunch of grain and the mycelium itself right. doesn't have any of the benefits that everybody's saying it has. So it's like, we've all been buying all these little mushroom powders and putting them in our coffee. They're not doing anything. And I was like, that makes sense, you know? And so even as health coaches, it's like, you gotta be like, I, that's probably the most common question I get from clients. I just, I think I answered that twice this morning, which blah, 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 should I get? Which vitamin right. D should I get? Which whey right. protein should I get? Which vitamin C is good. And as health coaches, we just have to like do our own research and find out and be nerdy. And then you still kind of don't yes. know, and you got to just trust the company that they're doing what they say they're doing. And so in this case, like having some regulations is actually kind of nice. Cause it's like, okay, they're not, mm-hmm. not going to be able to just buy some cheap bulk powder that doesn't actually work from China and encapsulate it and say it's this, you know, so that being said, in terms of, you know, uh, uh, why a, a health coach or, you know, a doctor, or even just an average listener, someone who's listening to this, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again. So if you are on YouTube, you guys can share, like, I'm sure what most people listening are thinking is like, why, why would I need this? And and how was it different? And how does it help? So can we go through, some of the, sure. you know, just the basics of why someone might consider this and for what, you know, what applications, yeah. what reasons. Yeah. If you want to stop there or go to the second slide and Let's thank you it. so much, Tara, for saying what you said, like, how does the public discern? And this right. is sort of one threshold that regulation does serve. Like one thing we know the manufacturing here, it's CGMP. So it's pharmaceutical grade. So at least what, what people are claiming is in there is in there. Right. And then, right. 
you know, again, we know the ingredients of grass generally recognized as safe because the FDA is saying it, which is why we could make a drug claim for the dietary management and the nutritional management of a disease. That's how the category works. And yes, you should get physician supervision because you have a disease that's being managed. But mm -hmm. looking at uh, that they're proven safe and effective and clinically validated, for me, when, when you have something that like theramine, which is in that picture and in that box, has been, has, there's been over 30 million doses ingested in humans safely. Wow. And it's worked in many, many, many people over 10 years for chronic pain and inflammation. You know, for me, that is extraordinarily unusual to have and, and have published clinical data that supports its use in chronic pain and inflammation. Hmm. And I don't say in any given person with pain and inflammation, this is definitely going to work for you or be a solution. But I can't say that about any pharmaceutical med either or any right. other counter or any supplement. So, you know, this at least has good science clinical published data, double blind trials against ibuprofen and naproxen, you know? Um, so I think has been used by physicians and pharmacists for many, many years, was prescription only, and now is available to use. So why wouldn't you try it? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but it's safe. You mm -hmm. might get a little dry mouth or some slight nausea, mm -hmm. but you're not gonna get an adverse side effect past that, and you won't have a drug interaction. And you know, and yeah. to me, it's a no brainer, frankly. So in terms of, you know, let's hit on theramine for a second. So, I mean, I, on the bottle, what does it say? Uh, back and joint discomfort, but you're basically pain and for chronic pain and inflammation. And then it right. says that it's messenger amino acid technology. Can you elaborate on that? Right. Sure. Sure. So, and that's the patent of this company and, uh, you know, the technology that allows us to do it. In fact, if you want to bounce down a few slides. Sure. Um, there's a slide on it as I explain it. Um, keep going and uh, keep going. you'll see it in a moment. There it is. Ah, this okay. one up here. Yes. Oh, okay. That one there, you know, so you guys really got to come see right. this on YouTube. Okay. But we'll, we'll explain yeah. the best oh, that we sorry can. Sorry about that. That's <laughs> true. Well, in any way I, I could explain it and hopefully for those who are on audio, you'll understand. So, because this is neurotransmitter science. So again, for those who aren't watching, a neurotransmitter is a, a, a signaling molecule. It's like the messenger that, that is the chemical messenger that carries a signal across a synapse, which is the gap between the nerve endings. So the nerves communicate, right? Mm -hmm. So in our nervous system, you know, there's, it's, a, it's a giant communication like the, like the web, right? Yeah. We have a nervous system and there's these chemicals like you've heard of many, like serotonin, right? You know mm -hmm. that serotonin is, is, you know, communicating. And if the levels are low in the brain and you have low levels of serotonin, you might see depression. So if you look at medications like called SSRIs, a serotonin reuptake inhibitors like a, uh, a Prozac, for instance, mm -hmm. right? It's inhibiting the uh, reuptake of serotonin across the cell. So it's keeping more circulating serotonins out there, binding mm -hmm. to receptors, right? So your mm -hmm. levels might stay up, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is we're hopefully maintaining good levels of serotonin by making it naturally in our body, because serotonin, like other things, are produced. And we're utilizing amino acids, like, you know, 5-HTP, 5-hydroxytryptophan, mm -hmm. is the precursor, meaning that's the material that turns into the serotonin, right? right. So 5-HTP, neurotransmitter, amino acid form you could eat, right? Um, in this technology, what we are doing in this patented technology is providing neurotransmitter amino acid precursors to neurotransmitters to get all these neurotransmitters that are deficient balanced yeah. in each of these disease states. And it's a number of neurotransmitters. And we're doing it with this patented technology that the inventor brilliantly introduced, which provides the amino acid uh, precursor, provides an uptake stimulated to, to make the cell uptake the amino acid better prevents it from being broken down, activates the neuron, 
and then prevents attenuation, which is why people get, uh, you know, used to things and develop tolerance. You need higher and higher doses. And it does this with the amino acids so that you don't have to take, if your serotonin levels are low, you can't necessarily take like grams and grams, like shovels full of 5-HTP and get that effect. It just right. doesn't work that way. So this allows with micrograms and mm. certain combinations of how they were put together with mm. these certain herbs that they combine with mm. to, through this technology, give a microgram of amino acid, produce an adequate a, a neurotransmitter that reproducibly should balance the deficiency and let the body naturally heal. Another mm. mouthful, but ask mm, some questions. No, I love it. Uh, quick nerdy question. I'm being selfish right now, but because um, I have, I'm not. Are are is low serotonin associated with chronic pain? Is that specific? Oh, are you specifically course. talking about theramine here in terms of helping with serotonin? I'm just curious sure, for myself, sure. like the the neurotransmitters oh, associated with chronic pain. Yes, yes. So this that's quite a quite a question. This now we could go into fifteen years. <laughs> okay, okay. No, 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 no. So, so pain is uh, pain is hyper hyper complex. But one thing yeah. you know is it's a disease of the nervous system, past a disease purely of I stub my toe. If we use an example here, you get pain when you stub your toe because. There's nerve endings and chemicals get secreted and they get the irritation gets signaled up to the spinal cord and gets carried on other nerves through the spinal cord to the brain. And then you perceive something and you go, ouch, mm -hmm. I stubbed my toe and it hurts like hell, right? Mm -hmm. But there's all sorts of things going on, but that stimulus and the pain you feel are fairly well correlated, right? Like if mm -hmm. you bang it yeah. hard, it's going to hurt more. Right. It's, it's it's called the nociceptive stimuli. There's mm. these nociceptive pain receptors mm. that carry a signal. And in an acute injury, you know, even though we we differ tremendously in our sensitivities to pain, but acutely within ourselves, we have a reasonable correlation to intensity of stimuli and the amplitude of those neural transmissions and the degree of our pain perception in the acute phase, okay? Mm -hmm. So what happens though, if you think about it, when you stub your toe, there's a lot that happens past after that ouch, that, that you know, hate to say that sucks, right? Ouch, mm -hmm. my toe really hurts, it's getting red. But the next thing that happens is your brain is saying, that's gonna be all right. I stub my toe, it's gonna hurt yeah. for a few minutes or a little longer, but. It's not like, oops, I sprained my back or what's that pain? Do I have a tumor? You know? Right. So the brain then does this whole other thing. And that's called uh -huh. the central modulation of pain. So uh -huh. the perception is interacting with our complex nervous system in a wow. central fashion through our thalamus and all these different mm -hmm. pathways and stop points and our emotional limbic system comes wow. in. Because if we were scared, our limbic system would send right. out epinephrine and wow. all sorts of signals that would increase sensitivity and actual perception of pain. Mm. And over time, just wow. to try and go through this 12 year explanation yeah. <laughs> in three more minutes, over time, as pain becomes more chronic, the central modulation of pain. So how, what's happening in the brain is much more important what's happening down in the periphery like where you stub the toe. So the, the mechanical or biomechanical wow. insult, which is why someone may have arthritis and it's hurting for a while, but if they get used to it, it's still there. The nervous system is constantly filtering millions and hundreds of millions of sensory inputs. Like you don't feel your socks right now, unless I say you feel your socks. <laughs> and then the nervous system says, oh, my socks or my underwear. And it decides right. to pay attention, but there's so much, so much capacity, right? So that capacity of what gets brought to our sensory awareness at any given time, smell, touch, pain, et cetera. There's endless filters for those hundreds of millions of sensations, right? Mm -hmm. And those get, are deeply interacted with, everything that's way more complex wow. to do in a short time than our consciousness yeah. and our emotions and fears. So serotonin, wow. of course, is playing a role in pain, 
and, and that's why people with pain, chronic pain, you're going to get depressed, right? I mean, they wow. go hand in hand. Right. Right. So there's a deep interface with those neural and the, these feedback mechanisms are sort of endless because they happen centrally, but they often they also send signals down to the nerve endings and change the sensitivities. Wow. So it's constant feedback loops and it's of all the neurotransmitters typically. Like GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, but it's not that simple, right? Because it, <laughs> I mean, none of this is that simple, right? Yeah. So, but the point is, what I, you know, for the sake of this show, I'd like yeah. to say many of the neurotransmitters are pay, playing a role in, 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 it takes their balance to optimize a nervous system that could dampen pain well dampen the signal, lower mm. it, right? Mm -hmm. So, and in people with chronic pain and inflammation, those signals somewhat because of neurotransmitters imbalance are not being dampened to the degree they can be often. Mm -hmm. So our neurotransmitters may balance the neurotransmitters and therefore dampen pain signals. Right. right. As pain being a disease of the nervous system, just like sleep is a disease of the nervous system, just mm -hmm. like obesity, our cravings, we eat for mood often, right? Mm, and right. it changes. And we're all dopamine addicted. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. and that's where lifestyle management plays into everything. But as you can see, we could go down lots of rabbit holes. Wow. But I'll come back to Well, the thank you for that. I selfishly am very, very glad I asked you that because that's got me really going with like how many different systems are coming in in terms of long-term pain. Like your exactly like your your tr past traumas, your beliefs about life, like your, you know, your limbic system, your all all of your different parts of your brain. Oh my God, that, that's gonna have me going yeah. for a while. So thank you. Okay. So in the time that we have left, I want to talk about uh, just a few more of the the products that you guys have. Yeah. So I'm going to share the screen again for anybody who is on video and then we'll explain to you. So obviously you guys have a GABA product and, 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 you know, I think this is like, I mean, in my opinion, like it, most people, it's sad, like they don't even know what their neurotransmitters are. These things that can tr completely control their life experience. You know, I, I do a lot of neurotransmitter education and the coaching that I do and nobody, they don't really know they've heard GABA for sleep. You know, maybe they might've heard something like that, but like you said, GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter that helps you not have racing thoughts and you can't ever get out of it, you know? And, um, I think that's helpful for people to know. So when they're having racing thoughts, it's like, Hmm, maybe I'm having a hard time turning glutamate into GABA. So my brain can calm down, you right. know, and then you build up GABA and all of a sudden it's like, wow, I guess I'm not just crazy. I guess I just had a neurotransmitter deficiency, sure, <laughs> you know? Exactly. So, so there's, um, there's that. And I just, I don't know, do you want to give us some highlights? Of some I, of these? Rob, I, yeah. I, I'd love to give a quick overview because what's sure. important is Again, it's a very complex system how how neurotransmitters interact. Yeah. The, one of the bottom one of the bottom lines is, and and you could keep it on the first slide if you okay. want. I'll talk about all sure. of them. Is or, or there may be a slide that that just shows what each of them do, but I'll just okay. describe it. But one of the things is many of them play a role in many of the pathways of many different problems like pain and inflammation, yeah. serotonin. GABA, you know, acetylcholine, they're all so, right. you know, theramine uses GABA too, because it's inhibitory, right? Mm, and it uses right. choline, which produces mm. acetylcholine. Mm. And so on and on, you know, yeah. so I'll just talk for a moment for the sake of time, that okay. they're all providing a variety of amino acid precursors and certain herbal com combinations and grapeseed extract awesome. and caffeine in some of them to do certain things in that patented pathway. Mm -hmm. And with that, they each have an effect on a different problem. Okay, so theramine nice. is indicated and is the most widely used for chronic pain and inflammation, working through GABA, GABAergic systems, you know, lot dopaminergic systems, lots of systems, right? Cool. At modulating serotonin. Um, mm -hmm. Centra AM works on fatigue and cognitive decline. That's what mm -hmm. it's indicated for. Some okay. people use it instead of coffee, actually. Mm -hmm. One of my chief medical officers does, and he's a Harvard trained MD with 20 years experience doing this. Um, wow. Uses Centra AM in the morning, gives it to a lot of seniors for 
fatigue cognitive decline. It has an alertness effect. It works. It does use a number of the stimulatory neurotransmitters as well. Centropium, which does have GABA in it as well, and a lot of these do, um, mm -hmm. works for sleep as does gabadone. So centropium and gabadone are both for sleep. Centropium tends to be more with sleep and depression. Gabadone tends to be with more with sleep and anxiety. Mm. So it tends to have more of a gabinergic effect and quiet the brain more and, and have an anti-anxiety effect as well. And there's people who take it for anxiety. And there's people who have, I, I've had on both gabadone and centropium to sleep better with the combination. And wow. I can't really explain other than they're all safe and they're all nutritional. So I got to the point when I was prescribing them and learning from my patients of why not try this and add this and right. it became the art of medicine, but mm. no risk, no downside. Right. But by the indications, gabadone for sleep and anxiety, Centra PM for sleep with uh, a little depression, mm. Centra AM for cognitive decline and fatigue, theramine for pain and inflammation, Procura for neuropathy, which I found fascinating because in my pain practice, I have a lot of patients with neuropathy and I'm prescribing a lot of, you know, gabapentin, neurontin. And, you know, listen, it's a great drug, but it has a lot of side effects and it's really tough, like a lot of the other drugs. So mm -hmm. with many of these, like theramine in particular, I was able to wean people down sometimes, sometimes off their anti-inflammatories, wow. sometimes down to 70% less which would nice. eliminate their gastrointestinal side effects and most mm. of the risk factors and on and on. You know, we have trepidone indicator for osteoarthritis. So that also has pain and inflammation, right? But I'd often have people both on theramine and trepidone. And we have people who've been on these for seven, eight years managing their pain non-pharmacologically now with natural medicines through neurotransmitter science. Some of them still taking their pain meds and their anti-inflammatories, but at much, much lower doses. And some, it may not have worked, but you know, again, why wouldn't you try it? Aptrim works on suppressing appetite naturally by eliminating craving, by increasing um, parasympathetic tone somewhat, okay? Mm -hmm. So again, it goes on, but uh, they wow. all are safe and effective in many, many people, and then nutritional medicine working through neurotransmitters, promoting natural healing. And, you know, we know the manufacturing, we know the science. And yeah. I am just hopeful many, many people and practitioners get to learn about this as an important revolution and an option in, uh, in, in symptomatic management for people with lifestyle, with exercise, with mindset, with meditation. Mm. But this is something I'm passionate because it's unknown. Yeah, I can see why you got so excited about this because if we can help people build healthy neurotransmitter levels, like I don't, so one of my, uh, just quick notes, I know one of my certifications is it's called neurotyping, right? And so I actually look in person and personality traits for, you know, do you have racing thoughts all the time? I'm trying to get clues. Are you super competitive? Are you really engaging your nervous system? You like to sprint, you know, and so I'm looking for little clues of GABA and dopamine oh. and serotonin, you know, and, um, it's, it's been really eye-opening for me and all my clients to, to understand how much your neurotransmitters impact your entire quality of life. Like if you have issues there, like it's, and this is cool because you're adding into like the physiological effects of like neuropathy and, you know, yeah. chronic pain and inflammation. Like that's something I hadn't even considered. So thank you for yeah. this. <laughs> um, but, but it's to the point that the guy who created the system I use, he doesn't even believe in emotions or I've heard him say that he's like, Oh, it's just all your neurotransmitters. It's just, you think that's how you feel, but if you got your serotonin back up, you'd be feeling different about it. And I kind of see what he means, you know, of course. <laughs> Right. So they, they're really yeah. important, really important. So um, oh, my last question, and I'm probably everybody else is wondering too, like, do you have to go through a healthcare professional to get these products now? Or can you buy them and you just recommend that? They yes, we're, we're, we're offering them online. And hopefully you will, you know, have awesome. your physician supervise it and yeah. have your physician contact me, please. And let me tell him why <laughs> yeah. you should bring this to his whole practice. So, you know, medicalfoods.com, you can buy these, all of them. And I hope people 
try and read about them. We have a lot of education. We have the published studies. Again, some of the biggest sleep meds in the world, tryptophan, our centripium was studied against, our therapy was studied against ibuprofen and naproxen, but medicalfoods.com, you can learn about them. You could try them, obviously, by purchasing them. You could connect your health provider to me, or you could connect with me, Dr. Mike, at medicalfoods.com. I keep it simple, Dr. Awesome. Mike, medicalfoods.com. And, um, you know, I'm here to educate people and hope, hopefully bring a healthier option to a system that needs yeah. all of us working together to improve health and wellness and uh, be preventative, look at root causes. And yes, you know, mm. mood and dopamine dictate a lot, but we are chemistry sets to a degree as well. And these yeah. amino acids and neurotransmitters and food is medicine. Yeah. And this is just doing and addressing things in a unique I way. It. I love it. So, I love it so much. Thank you so much for taking the time. And guys, we'll link everything we talked about in the show notes. And I just, I love, it's it's cool to see you uh, transition into the, like just learning about your background. I can see why you're so passionate about it. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. And it can probably yeah. prevent a lot of people from, being on, well, I shouldn't say that, but hopefully I'm like, hopefully it prevents a lot of people from being on pharmaceuticals that don't give them exactly right. what they want. You know, it's just another option right. and it's food. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. anyway, thank you so exactly. much. Thank you so much, Dr. Mike. We'll thank link you everything. So much, Dara. 